10, 1, 10, 6, even more practice. What's with all this practice? Practice, practice. Talking about practice. Uh, well, over the years, um, I have found that um, these sections, like as we get into looking at series and um, sequences too, but mostly series, and looking at like convergence tests and stuff like that, it's not that it's super hard, it's just kind of different than um, the kind of math that you might be used to doing. And the answers are, you know, it's like not like an answer, like x equals 2. Boom. That's the answer. Looked in the back of the book, it's right. Um, it's not really like that. It's, our answers are like these, you know, um, short mathematical paragraphs of um, like how we know that a series converges or not. So um, anyway, um, it's my experience, uh, my cumulative experience over the years that we um, need a little bit more practice with this stuff. So that's why. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, which of the following sequences converge? Now remember, if we're talking about a sequence, that is a list of numbers. We are not adding these things up. We don't care, for example, like if you look at this and you're like, oh, well, these terms are going to be approaching 2, so it doesn't even pass the terms have to be going to 0 test. That is not what we're looking at here. These are lists of numbers, so for a sequence to converge, that is the same as asking, uh, does the limit as n approaches infinity of whatever the terms are, the thing in here, um, does that limit exist? If it does, um, then uh, that's what it converges to. So I should have said here, which of the following sequences, sequences converge, and um, what do they converge to? Uh, so how about this one? Well, as you plug in n, bigger, 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 this is just going to go off to infinity. So this is a solid nope. Not this one. Um, this one, uh, as you go off to infinity, the terms are getting smaller and smaller. So uh, those terms, this sequence does converge. It converges to 0. Um, here, what do these the limit as n approaches infinity? These are going to go to 2, highest power, top and bottom, right? So it's just an easy limit there. Going to converge to 2. Um, this is uh, one of my faves here. Uh, if you keep plugging bigger and bigger numbers in here, this is like the $1 invested at 100% interest uh, compounded n number of times, and as n approaches infinity, you get e. I sure do like that one. That's fun. Um, and here, what about 2 to the n over n squared? Hmm, well, we would have to do a limit thing there, uh, a limit thing. You know what limit thing I'm talking about? I have to do L'Hopital's rule there to see what's going on. Um, we start out at infinity over infinity. Now, maybe you have a sense of uh, which one of those things goes off to infinity faster. They're not both just like same power. It's not like this, where you have an n to the whatever power, n to the whatever, whatever power. Um, so uh, what's up with this? Well, if I did L'Hopital's rule to this, the derivative of 2 to the n, do you remember what that is? It's kind of like e to the x, but it's not an e, so there's this extra little factor there that happens. Um, and then that's 2 to the n. That's still infinity, or 2 times n, rather. Um, that's still infinity over infinity, but maybe you can see what's happening now. If I did L'Hopital one more time, I'm going to get 2 to the n, and then another natural log 2 would happen. And then this would just turn into 2. So uh, now I don't have infinity over infinity anymore. I just have infinity on the top. So this is not going to converge. A uh, quick aside here, if you were going to have, I can't remember if I did this in the notes somewhere or not. Um, this might be something that I talk about in class sometime. Um, but if you were going to have uh, the going to infinity Olympics, and here's your contestants. Contestant number one is a polynomial. Hear all that crowd, tens of thousands of people. 
all gathered in a giant stadium. Don't worry, they're all wearing masks. Um, polynomial, um, so let's say, uh, how about n squared? It doesn't matter what that number is, but we'll just put a 2 there for fun. Um, so uh, there's a polynomial, and then there's exponential. Uh, so that would be like a number, like 2 or whatever other number you want to the n. And then we have logarithmic. Boo. Um, so log could be natural log or whatever, log base, whatever you want. And then finally, the hometown favorite, the factorial. That's my, sorry, that's my applause noise, just in case you didn't figure that out. Okay, so if you were having a uh, going to uh, Infinity Olympics, like a race, um, maybe you have a sense of what happens here. This is just something, you can't uh, use this as any kind of justification, like if you're trying to convince somebody of this, you can't say, oh, don't you know about the going to infinity Olympics that my calculus teacher said something about? Sorry, nobody else knows about this, just us. So, um, who is going to get to infinity the fastest? Do you know? Do you know? Factorial just um, kicks everybody else's butt. And then uh, exponential, pretty good job. Polynomial made the podium. Um, and this is true, by the way, for it doesn't matter. This could be like n to the like 111 power, and this could still just be 2 to the n, and this, they would still finish this way. It does not matter what these numbers are, as long as they're greater than 1. Um, so uh, that this is still true. Um, and then um, also ran was the log function, which goes off to infinity tragically slowly. So it's good to know, just for like an intuitive sense of things, uh, it's good to know that. Um, all right. Find the sum of each geometric series. Uh, let's see. This one, the terms are getting smaller, so that's good. So the sum of an uh, infinite geometric series, so I'll just write down the formula here so we can stare at it for a second. Okay, I'm done staring at it, and I'm going to use it to do first term over 1 minus r. So that adds up to 16. All right. Um, and then here, uh, let's see. If you're confused about how this is a geometric series or exactly what is the first term, what is the multiplier, uh, what's the multiplier, <coughs> excuse me, then uh, just write out the first couple terms. If you plug in 1, you get 5 over negative 3 or negative 5 thirds. If you plug in 2, you would get positive 5 ninths. If you plug in 3, oh, okay, I've seen enough. I think that's good. So the first term is negative 5 thirds, and the multiplier is negative 1 third. Just be careful with that. That's a common error. I think that simplifies to negative 5 fourths. What do you think? Would you agree with, the, with that? Um, yeah, I think so, because that's 4 thirds on the bottom, negative 5 thirds over 4 thirds, so I like it. Um, so uh, here, how about this? This is times 10, kind of awkwardly off to the side there, that 10 is. Uh, let's plug in the uh, first couple Ks, see what this looks like. So this is um, 5 fourths times 10. And then the second one would be 5 fourths squared. times 10. And um, I don't think I need to go further. Um, you can see here that 5 fourths is the multiplier, and that's bigger than 1. So um, this is uh, divergent. If you've got a geometric series, the multiplier's got to be less than 1, or in between negative 1 and 1. 
All right. And that fact is the basis of the ratio test, isn't it? Which brings us to these next problems, which might involve the ratio test. Um, determine whether each of the following series converges or diverges. And if it converges and it's alternating, which I know these are, but if it was, then we would want to say absolutely or conditionally uh, for the convergence. Okay, the first thing that has to be true for any series to converge is the terms have to be getting smaller and smaller going to zero. Um, are the terms of this smaller, uh, getting smaller going to zero? Yes, because there's a higher power of n on the bottom. So we are good there. We made it over the very low bar. At least we have a chance. Um, so uh, what is the best approach for one like this? Should we use the ratio test? Should we use limit comparison? Well, this just has n. This is just polynomial type stuff. I've got n to the first power, n to the second power. And that uh, lends itself to limit comparison, right? So by limit comparison, this series behaves like, and let's see, so that's n to the first over n squared, so that would simplify down to this. And that diverges. Why do we know that diverges, or how do we know? Because it's the harmonic series. Or you could say it's a p-series with p equal to 1. How about this? Uh, well, the first thing that has to be true is that the terms must be approaching 0 for there to be a chance at all. And it looks like the terms of this approach 1 tenth. So you can't add together. Um, a bazillion going off to infinity one-tenths and expect to converge to something. So the limit as n approaches infinity, that's an n, sorry, n approaches infinity of the terms uh, is one-tenth, which is not equal to zero, so um, it diverges. That's called the divergence test. Um, if you want to give it a name. Uh, now this one, this one has a factorial on the bottom, so that, I feel like that's um, going to have a chance. And when we have a factorial on the bottom, uh, let's see. By the logic of the going to infinity Olympics, I have a factorial on the bottom, and I've got two different exponentials on the top. But two different exponentials multiplied together is really just like one exponential. Um, so I think that we're probably good um, by that logic. And certainly, if we try the ratio test, and this, um, and it, it, it'll show up, the fail will show up if we were wrong about it passing the divergence test, um, if the ratio test gives us a conclusion. All right, so I'm going to tell the world, hey world, hello world, I'm doing the ratio test now. And the world says, so what? Uh, so the limit is k approaches infinity. You do the k plus 1 term. That's e to the k plus 1 times 3 to the k plus 2 over, I plug k plus 1 in there, plus 2, it's k plus 3 factorial. And then I need to to divide by this term, which is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. Okay. Then I shall simplify. So here I get an extra e on the top, and I got one extra 3 on the top. And then I got a k plus 3 on the bottom. That's just a number. And then k is going off to infinity, so this is going to go to 0. So that means the series converges. And why? Because, because, <laughs> there's no O in because, because 
the limit as k approaches infinity of the k plus 1 term over the k term. And these aren't alternating, they're all positive, but in general, we only care about the absolute value because this uh, is less than 1. All right? You don't have to write that every time, but I'm just reminding you that's how the ratio test works. All right. Next. Um, determine whether or not each of the following alternating series converges. Here we go. Conditionally, absolutely, or diverges. Um, all right. Uh, what kind of series is this? Never hurts to write out a few terms. Let's square that. And then plug 3 in. So um, this is a geometric series. Uh, and it's a geometric series with r equal to negative 3 halves. So this uh, diverges. Because the r is greater, uh, well, let's say the absolute value of the r is greater than 1. I like that way of saying it. All right. Um, this one, we do not have the sigma notation, so I think I would like to supply that. If I started at 1, then this looks like it's 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. So it looks like it's 1 over n plus 1 squared. You could also start that at 2. That would work. Usually we'd like to keep that at 1 or a 0. Um, and then I need a sine alternator, so negative 1 to the, the first term is positive, so I would need that to be n plus 1. Okay? Looks good. Um, now we are ready to uh, determine if it converges or not. Now remember, if it's an alternating series and the terms are going to 0, then that's automatically going to give us convergence. Um, so it converges because the absolute value of the terms going to 0, and uh, it alternates. The terms alternate. Um, and now, since this is just like a 1 over n squared, by limit comparison, the absolute value of the series behaves like the limit uh, behaves like that, uh, 1 over n squared rather, right? Because I have like just a 1 on the top, n squared on the bottom. So it behaves like this. Converges because it's p series with p greater than 1. So, what does that all mean? It converges because it was alternating and the terms are getting smaller going to 0, um, but it also would have converged by limit comparison. We determined it also would have converged if it wasn't alternating. So, what does that mean? It means we have absolute convergence. Absolute meaning like absolute value. So this converges ab so freaking lootly. Absolutely. All right, that's how you do that. Um, if it doesn't, if you take out the alternating thing and then it doesn't converge, like the alternating harmonic series, for example, then that converges conditionally. All right. Um, how about this here? This looks like, um, dang, this looks like the same problem. 
um, because I'm looking at the k squared on the top, k cubed on the bottom. Oh, I guess this is going to be like the harmonic series. So I'm kind of thinking through this whole logic before I start writing things down. Uh, never a bad idea to think ahead a little bit. Um, so uh, the series converges because the absolute values uh, of the terms go into zero and it alternates. Alternates. So it's definitely going to converge. Um, now by the limit comparison test, the absolute value of the series behaves like k squared k cubed, so that's 1 over k, and that diverges because it's the harmonic series. You can't do that HS abbreviation, sorry, that's not um, sanctioned on a test or a quiz. Uh, so that diverges because it's the harmonic series. So what does that mean? Well, it converges because it's alternating and the terms are going to zero. But if you take away the alternating thing, then it's like the harmonic series. So that means it only converges conditionally. Converges conditionally. All right. Last problem. Write this series in summation notation. If I want to start at 1, I like to start at 1, then this looks like I'm starting with the second factorial on the bottom. And I got some alternating signs. Uh, first term is positive, so I need the n plus 1 there. Okay. Does the series converge absolutely conditionally, or does it diverge? Um, so for B, it converges because the terms, absolute value of the terms go to zero, and it alternates. And that's enough for convergence. Um, and does it converge absolutely? Yeah, it looks like it's going to, right, because I've got factorials on the bottom. So uh, just to show that real quick, I'm going to do the ratio test. Limit n approaches infinity of the n plus 1 term Notice that I'm not putting the sine alternator in here when I do the ratio test. Always leave that out. Now I need to divide by this term, which is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. And that leaves me a uh, limit as n approaches infinity, 1 over n plus 2, which is 0. So that means that this thing was going to converge. Ratio test is giving us a number less than 1 here. So this thing was going to converge even if it wasn't alternating. So this converges absolutely. Um, if the sum s is approximated by finding s4, which got four terms right there, uh, an interval can be constructed using the alternating series error bound that must contain s. Find that interval. Hmm, what does that mean? How do I do that? Uh, thinking about these things as intervals is, I think, an important thing to be able to do. And um, I put this on here. I'm not sure if we've done one exactly like this yet, where we're constructing that interval. But every once in a while, a college board likes to sneak an interval uh, question in. So um, alternating series error bound. I know what that is. That is the S 
the real sum minus the partial sum, the difference between the actual sum and the partial sum, I put S4 here because that's the one we're talking about, is going to be less than the next term, which is A sub 5, the fifth term. Okay, so let's just fill in the details here then. Um, so S minus, um, I wonder, I think if I really made you do this, would this be a calculator problem? I'll do it without a calculator, but this might be a calculator problem. I want to know what S4 is. So S4 is like the first four terms here. So um, I'm going to write that out on a little bit of scrap paper here. So I got a half minus a sixth plus 1 over 24 minus 1 over 120. Right, I'm writing those out because I want to get a common denominator here. So I've got, uh, that's my common denominator, um, 60 over 120 minus 20 over 120 plus 5 over 120 minus 1 over 120. Right. I think I'm good there. Okay. So 60 minus 20 is 40, plus 5 is 45, minus 1 is 44. So that's 44 over 120, or dividing by 4, it gives me 11 over 30. That wasn't that bad. And that's going to be less than um, A5. So A5 is... Um, one, the absolute value of that, it's 1 over 6 factorial, which is 1 over 720. Right? Okay, so what's this about? Write it as an interval of the possible values, or, the, or an interval that must contain s. Well, if you think about what this means, one way of writing that, rewriting that, I'm going to squeak it over here, is that if the absolute value of this has to be less than that, it means that this thing, s minus 11 over 30, is in between positive and negative uh, 1 over 720, right? That's a thing you learned about absolute value um, equations and equalities um, back in Algebra 2, most likely. Okay, and then I'm just going to add this to the other pieces. So I have 11 over 30 minus 1 over 720, um, less than s, and then 11 over 30 plus 1 over 720. And this should make sense. This is our partial sum, 11 over 30, and then this is like how much we could be wrong by. So it's that 11 over 30 plus or minus that error. If you really wanted to get a... Um, common denominator here, you could, uh, let's see, 30 times 24 is 720, so 11 times 24 is uh, for 264, um, and that would give me 264 minus 1, so 263 over 720, uh, that would be that would be it. There you go. Um, I don't care. You can certainly leave it like that. That's fine. But that's the interval. And you could write it in interval notation like that if you want to. That's the interval. So the real sum has to be somewhere in this interval. That's what that alternating series error bound tells us. Okay, bye.